Hello everyone! Welcome to Cook Me Herbs Coding Class. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to use the News API. They've got a really creative name, I know, but they do supply the latest headlines by country, and they also have a search API. I'm going to be showing you how to use their top list by country endpoint, but if you want to be using their search endpoint instead, it's very easy to adapt the code from this video to work with their endpoint. So, I'm going to click Get News, and look at that. It's all of the latest news. Most of them have images, a couple of them don't. This one here looks a little weird, but uh, it works. I'm going to just click here, and here's the news. It's about Trump since it's the United States. All the news here is about Trump. Let's get started. All right, let's get started. Pop up in your text editor or whatever you prefer to use to write HTML. Is that font size good? That font size looks good. And of course, the first thing we're going to do is make a doc type tag. Exclamation mark, doc type, HTML. Now let's open a script tag. And let's make a new function. Function get news, open parentheses, close parentheses. You can call it whatever you want. This is what I am calling it. Open curly brackets. And the first thing you're going to do is fetch, open parentheses, HTTP, colon slash slash. Oh, you're also going to open quotes, by the way. Newsapi.org slash v2 slash top dash headlines question mark country equals and put in your country I right, put in US and ampersand API key equals and paste in your API key you're gonna need to sign up for an account with your email address all right, here's my API key. Paste that in right there. Close quotes, close parentheses. Don't put a semicolon here. Whatever you do, don't do that. Leave it like that, no semicolon. Okay, now underneath it add a dot then, open parentheses, A or whatever letter you want, equals greater than sign A dot J S O N open parentheses, close parentheses, close parentheses. Don't add a semicolon at the end of this line either. And what that does is it just converts the response into a JavaScript object which we can read. Now add in a dot then afterwards response or whatever you want to call your variable, it doesn't really matter. Equals sign greater than symbol open curly braces and then the first thing we're going to do is make a for loop. So for, open parentheses, var i equals zero, semicolon, i is less than response dot articles dot length, semicolon, i plus plus, or plus plus i, as I said in the previous video. Now, open curly brackets document dot get element with a capital E by with a capital B ID with a capital I open parentheses open quotes output close quotes close parentheses dot inner HTML with a capital H T M and L plus sign equals sign so we're adding to this open quotes div give it the style attribute equals open a different kinds of quotes padding dash top colon 20 pixels semicolon close quotes and what that does is it makes it so that there's a little bit of space between the results again this is just to make it readable you don't have to do that 
and then inside of it, make an image, IMG. Give it the style attribute as well, style equals. Open the same quotes you opened here. Float, colon, left, semicolon, width, colon, 150 pixels, semicolon. Close quotes. Give it an SRC attribute. SRC equals open these same quotes that you opened here and then close the, the quotes that you opened over here. Now we're going to do plus response dot articles open square brackets I close square brackets dot URL to with a capital T image with a capital I plus now open quotes again close the quotes you opened all the way over here and finish the image tag now open an h1 tag h1 close quotes again plus response dot articles open square brackets i close square brackets dot title plus open quotes again and close the h1 tag slash h1 now close quotes plus response dot articles open square brackets i close square brackets dot source dot name plus open quotes again br for line break close quotes plus response dot articles open square brackets i close square brackets dot description plus open quotes space a href equals open quotes the the other kind and then close quotes plus response to articles open square brackets i close square brackets dot URL plus open quotes, close the other quotes, and then oh, target equals open quotes underscore blank, close quotes. Now we're going to close the other quotes plus response dot articles. open square brackets I close square brackets dot URL again plus open quotes and close the a tag and also close the div tag and close quotes now you can put a semicolon close square brackets close them again close parentheses and finally close square brackets and close the script tag that's all the JavaScript. Now, onto the HTML. Very simple. I'm going to make a button. Button. Give it the on click attribute. Equals open quotes. Get news. Open parentheses, close parentheses, close quotes. And then inside of it, we can put get news. Wahoo! And then close the button tag. Finally, make a div. Give it the ID of output and put nothing inside it and save. Now, when you run this in your browser, this code right now won't work. I'm going to show you how to fix it, but for demonstration purposes, I want to show you it without the solution. Okay, let's call this newsapi.html. Wonderful. Now open your favorite browser, which should be Firefox, by the way. Open a new tab and drag to it whatever you called your file. 
Yes, okay. Here it is. Now, I'm going to hit get news and nothing is going to happen. Nothing happened. Now, let's see why. We should get an error in the console which says that the cross origin request was blocked. Oh, maybe I didn't press the button good enough. Let's press it. Interesting. We don't seem to be getting an error, but we're also not seeing our search results here. And here's why. The server is blocking our request. However, there's a simple solution. We can use a proxy server, which has been created for this very purpose, called Cores Anywhere. Because, well, they, they just didn't configure their server to take requests from from front-end web apps. So what we have to do is add right here inside the fetch https colon slash slash cores dash anywhere dot heroku app dot com slash and now we're not making a request to newsapi.org we're making a request to this server which is going to redirect us not redirect us it is going to give us the response that newsapi.org gives it. But it still won't take this request. The server is not going to like that. We have to give it a specific header so that it knows that we're not just using their website for standard web browsing because I guess they don't want that. So what you have to do is add a comma after the end quote but before the end parentheses and add open square brackets, close them again, and then inside them put headers, colon, new headers with a capital H, open parentheses, and then inside these parentheses, we're going to open, open brackets, and inside the brackets, we're going to open quotes, and inside the quotes, we'll type X, capital X, dash requested with a capital R, dash with with a capital W close quotes colon open quotes again and just put whatever you want in here it really doesn't matter it just needs something in that header so excellent close quotes close the curly brackets close the parentheses and now we can save this and we can reload in the browser and we can cut click that button and it should work. Okay, so there's another problem. There's a typo in my code. Possibly yours, but probably not. I did not type newsapi.org. As you can see, I typed newapi.org. So add in the S. This is probably why we weren't getting the error earlier, but now we can reload, hit that button. There's another issue up here there is a slight typo again with an s i typed article when i should have typed articles save this reload in your browser if you had that same typo and now as you can see it worked these are today's top stories and that is that thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe Buy my merch, and remember. Oh, actually, I have a story. So, remember how my website used to be cuckmecurb.gq? Well, I got an email asking me to renew that domain, and it was blocked by Gmail's spam filter, and I didn't see it. And then the domain expired. So I went to re-register it, and it was more expensive than before. And that's ridiculous. So I'm not getting the domain. And my website is no longer cookmecurb.gq. If you see anything on there, that is not me unless I tell you otherwise. My website is now cookmecurb.github.io unless I can find myself a lovely domain like maybe cookmecurb.com. But for the moment, this is my website. Oh, and by the way, a couple days ago, somebody left a comment on one of my videos asking if I could make a tutorial on how to make a clicker game. I think that this is a good idea, but I'm not sure if I want to do it.
If you would be interested in such a tutorial, leave a comment. Maybe I'll do it. All right. Goodbye.